In this video, I'm going to quickly create a new, simple design and simulate it in Park Quest Explorer. With a new design started, the first thing we'll do is give it a title, and if we want, a description. We can also give it a tag. Using tags can help group your designs, as well as make them easier to find. Notice that I can connect parts by touching the terminals together and it will create a wire. Or I can just click a terminal, one of the parts, and it will begin a new wire. And I can drag it and connect it to the other part. This is an intuitive approach that makes it quick and easy to create a schematic. The next step will be to open the property editor and give the parameter values to the parts. Let's start here with a resistor. We can make it a 5 ohm resistor. And next, we'll set the inductor to 1 millihenry. For the voltage source, our voltage function generator will be set to pulse, with the pulse values set to 5 volts. We can also set the delay of 10 microseconds at the beginning, and we'll set the pulse width to 1 millisecond, the pulse period to 2 milliseconds. With all of the component values set, we can now proceed to the simulation. We will start with a transient or time domain simulation for 4 milliseconds. The simulation will be fast since this is a simple circuit. Once the simulation is done, we can look at the results by using probes and look at the net voltages on our different nets in the circuit. After placing some probes, we can see the voltage from the function generator is the 0 to 5 volts just like we had set it to be. Now using these probes, we can also look inside components. Looking closer at the inductor, we can see that the L over R time constant of 0.2 milliseconds and the steady state current of 1 amp is just as we would have expected it. So far, what we have seen is pretty typical for analog circuit simulators. However, now let's look inside the components and see the power being dissipated or the power output in the case of a function generator or the power input. To the inductor. With this information, we can begin to track the power and energy in our circuit. We can select to plot those waveforms in the viewer so it's easier to compare. Then we can overlay them on top of each other, and we'll be able to see more clearly where our power and energy is going. Notice that there's a difference between the power out of the function generator and the power being dissipated by the resistor. That difference is shown in the power being absorbed by the inductor. The brown waveform is the power into the inductor. When the voltage goes to zero, the voltage source, the inductor, supplies all the power. That's consumed in the resistor. Now, you may be wondering, how did the power get defined in the model, as well as how did the fundamental equations of inductor voltage and current relationships get defined? Well, if we look inside the inductor model, we can see that it's written in the IEEE standard 1076.1, also known as VHDL AMS. We can scroll down to the fundamental equations, and we see that V equals LDIDT, the standard equation for inductance. Also, in the for information only area, we have power equals V times I, the energy stored equals half LI squared. That diagnostic information is in there for us to be able to track the power and energy in the circuit. Now the last thing we'll do with this circuit is run an AC or frequency response analysis. We will enable the function generator to provide the AC stimulus with magnitude one and phase zero. Then we'll set up the frequency domain simulation to run from 50 hertz to 50 kilohertz. In the wave box, then we'll see the dB magnitude of the transfer function from voltage input to inductor current. We can plot the same waveform in the main viewer, where it's easy to analyze. Next, I'll plot the phase waveform, 
Then I'll add a cursor. If we go down a low frequency, we have minus 14 dB gain. That's 1 over the 5 ohm resistor. Then we reach the 3 dB point. 3 dB down at 45 degrees of phase is around 800 Hz. And that's the expected single pole frequency response.